Hi, Earth Day fans. Um, I'm Jillian Wilson-Martin, your Sustainability Coordinator in Natick, and I'm excited to host this session of our virtual tent talks. And with me um, today is Marianne Iarossi. Marianne is Natick's Open Space Planner and Conservation Agent, and we're so happy to have her here. Um, Marianne is a certified planner, and her background is in environmental planning. She has been working in both private and municipal planning for about 10 years. And before um, coming to Natick in August of 2019, she was working for the city of Framingham as one of their senior planners. Marianne is awesome. She's my partner in crime here in Natick, and she um, <laughs> has a deep love for open space and natural resources, and so much so that she enjoys planning her vacations as um, with a focus on visiting all the national parks. And I, I think she told me that her favorite national park so far that she's been to is the Joshua Tree Park in California. Um, so here today, Marianne is planning to talk to you about a plan, um, the open space plan here in Natick. It's an important planning tool for the town. It's a, it's a guiding document that we will be using to decide um, what our priorities are for open space, what next steps we want to take in terms of preserving open space, how we want to use that open space, and she'll get into all these details. So um, Marianne, you're our expert. We're so happy to have you. I'll turn it over to you. So first I wanted to tell you a little bit about what an open space and recreation plan is. It's a document that inventories the open space and recreational facilities in a community. And what we mean when we say open space is we mean forest, trails, really these passive recreational facilities. Most of them tend to be owned by the Conservation Commission. But when you go out hiking at the town forest or you go fishing at one of the local water bodies, these are more of the open spaces. Recreational facilities are more active. These are the ones that are typically managed and owned by the Rec and Parks Department. And these include playgrounds, basketball courts, soccer fields, baseball fields, basically those outside areas that you are actively recreating in. Something else the Open Space and Rec Plan does is it attracts the accomplishments that the community has made in regards to these resources. So think about park improvements, new protection properties, things of that nature. Lastly, the Open Space and Rec Plan establishes goals and a list of projects that the community wishes to take into the future. So why do we have an Open Space and Rec Plan why does it need to be updated every seven years? And why should you all care? Well, as mentioned, it creates that inventory of the open space and rec facilities. We don't really have another inventory. This is where it lives. It lives in the open space and rec plan. So this is a really important key component of the plan. It lays out that seven year roadmap or what we're calling the action plan to basically create this guiding document of the project that the town wants to complete. And the state actually requires this open space plan to be updated every seven years. So not all the communities are required to have this plan, but if you do have it, you're supposed to update it every seven years. And as I mentioned, Natick's 2012 open space and rec plan expired last year, which is what's bringing us to this point. If you don't have an open space and rec plan or it's not updated and it's expired, then you won't be able to tap into grants. And this is a really important piece to this whole puzzle. This, this open space and rec plan is a great tool for every community, including Native to have, but having an updated plan unlocks the opportunity to apply for important grants to implement the work. So we can apply the state through straight through state grant funds to protect new properties, to build parks, to improve the existing parks, add more trails, and address environmental concerns such as poor water quality. So Natick's open space and rec facilities are being used today more than ever in light of the situation that we're all, all living in. Uh, they offer a chance for us to go outside and enjoy the fresh air, gain mental clarity, and engage in physical activity. Also engaging in play, we're finding out more and more in the health and wellness industry that 
even adults need to be integrating play into their day-to-day -day life. We have a lot of stresses in our adult lives. So engaging in that physical activity of play is really important. And last, fostering, fostering an appreciation for the natural environment and being outside. I thought we could take a second just to think about the open space and rec spaces that you've used in the past week, month, or year. Just taking a moment to think about this. So I've thought about a few. <laughs> I'm sure some of you can think of way more. Maybe, maybe there's less and maybe you wish to go out and visit some of these spaces, but most of you probably have at least one of these spaces pop up into your mind. And these are the spaces that we want to preserve and that we want to improve and we want to make more of. And the open space rec plan is this document, the guiding document that the town can use to make this work and make these projects a reality. So before jumping a little bit more into the open space rec plan update, I wanted to just paint a little picture of what the open space and recreation today looks like in Natick. So this pie graph here shows the protected open space and rec lands by ownership type with acreage and percentage. So something important to note here is, um, you know, roughly a third of the town's open space and rec lands in Natick that are protected are held by nonprofits or other lands held under Article 97 protection. But a large chunk too, 20% is owned by the Natick's Conservation Commission. And right behind that is the state, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which owns 18% of those lands in Natick. And a big part of this is Lake Cachituate and Cachituate State Park. Um, Natick, we're very grateful and fortunate in Natick to have this amenity. Um, this is one of the state's Department of Conservation and Recreation's really valuable assets across the entire Commonwealth. Thousands and thousands of people visit Cachituate State Park from the greater Boston re region and beyond every year. So we're are extremely grateful to have this in um, our town's boundaries. So in total, there's just over 2,000 acres of protected open space and rec land in Natick, and that makes up almost 22% of the total land area. So that's pretty impressive. Over 20% of the lands in Natick are protected. This is a map that's probably a bit hard to see, but we can upload it on the website. Um, it also might be a little bit outdated, but it's a really great map that shows the distribution of these open space and rec lands in town. So some of these open spaces, I'm sure many of you are aware of, but the most common popular ones are the Charles River, Lake Cachituate, the Town Forest, JJ Lane Park, Pickerel Pond, some of the trails, even the Town Common. And these open space and rec lands are relatively well distributed across the town. Some of the neighborhoods are lacking these resources a bit, but generally it's well distributed in Natick, which is also an advantage. One of the, one of the important um, steps you have to take in updating your open space and rec plan is taking a look at the accomplishments that the community has done since the last update. So since Natick updated their plan last in 2012, I just wanted to touch on some of the accomplishments that we've had since 2012. So most recently, construction began for Natick's first dog park in the Kachitua Rail Trail. A couple of our parks had received complete rebuilds. In 2018, we with the help of some volunteers, constructed a bridge to connect Pickle Pond to the Weathersfield residential neighborhood. In 2016, a trail was built along the Kachituit Aqueduct, and we mapped some of the trails um, and distributed them for, for um, map, map knowledge, <laughs> trail map knowledge. 2015, the town purchased the 16-acre Peak and Hill Conservation Restriction for protection and public access. JJ Lane Park was expanded and rebuilt. And in 2014, a large parcel in Pickle Pond was transferred from DPW to CompCom 
for protection of public access. The Sudbury Aqueduct was open for trail use and the Pole North turf field was newly built with a walking path around it. And there's many more of these, but these are the high level ones just to give you a little taste of some of the stuff that the community has worked on since 2012. So over the past five years, the town had undertaken the Master Plan 2030 process, the Natick, Natick 2030 Master Planning process, which some of you may remember. And that was a very robust outreach, had a really robust outreach component. And we went out to the public through focus groups, through online surveys, through various public meetings, and we got a lot of input on what the town wanted to see in Natick over the next 10 plus years. And a lot of that outreach was surrounding open space and recreation. So some of those needs include stronger connections between open spaces and neighborhoods. And I wanted to throw this in here because I thought this was really interesting. Almost 90% of the land area in Natick is within one quarter of one quarter mile of public open space. Great, right? Seemingly. But less than 50% of the town is actually within a quarter mile of a formal park or open space entrance. So you might li live near one of these open spaces, but it doesn't mean you can access it. So that's a problem. We have to increase these connections to these open spaces. Other needs include smart growth and land protection, better stewardship of what we have, aquifer protection, increased passive and active recreational areas and programs, uh, over 98% of the Natick 2030 master plan survey respondents had said that they would support expansion and maintenance of Natick's active and passive open spaces, which is really compelling. And expanded access to water resources and improved marketing for existing assets were also needs. So these needs, what we do with them is we develop some goals. Now the 2020 open space and rec plan draft goals are similar to the 2012 open space and rec plan goals. And that's because not a lot has changed in terms of what the community wants for these resources. So we have tweaked them a little bit. So just to go through them, there's five goals. The first goal surrounds protecting Natix open spaces, such as water bodies, woodlands, farms, parks, for future generations to enjoy. The second goal surrounds stewardship of the resources that we have. The third goal looks at preserving and protecting the town's water supply and other natural resources. The fourth goal surrounds that connectivity need. So providing a system of walking and bicycle trails that connect our open spaces and our neighborhoods together. And then the last goal is increasing awareness and fostering appreciation for these, for these uh, amenities. What we do with these goals is these are really the first point or the first step in structuring our action plan. So the goals are used to structure the action plan. Um, we can divide those further, those goals further into objectives and to actions. The actions are very specific projects that we want to take in the future. Um, this action plan snapshot that I have on the screen here is just exactly that. It's a snapshot. This isn't the full action plan. You'll be able to download the action plan from the website and we want you all to take a look at it. We want you to look at it and tell us what's missing, what you don't like, what you think is confusing, because some of this stuff might make sense to us that have put it together, but it might not make sense to you. So we want your input on that. That's one of the key components. So in order to complete this process, we need your help. And there's a number of ways that we're asking for help. We're asking folks to fill out the online survey, which by the time this recording posts on Earth Day, the survey will be online. Um, we're asking folks to participate in the imagery campaign where you can send your open space and recreation photos to us and we will 
give you a chance to be featured in the actual open space and rec plan, which is exciting. And we want you to continue to follow along on the process to find out more ways you can be involved. So this is just a quick timeline and um, our next steps over the next few months. So currently we'll be soliciting input and asking folks to fill out the survey and participate in the imagery campaign through May 11th. Um, in May, staff will incorporate that input and we'll finalize a draft and release it for review. And then at that point, we'll ask the public to review that draft plan and give us additional input. And then we'll take that feedback and we will integrate it into that draft plan and we'll submit it to the state, hopefully by the end of June. The state will review it. We're not sure how long that process will take, but the state will typically review it and provide comments and suggestions back to us. So once we get those, we'll incorporate those into the plan and then we'll finalize the plan and release it and we can start implementing it. So hopefully by the summertime, not by the summertime, but by mid-summer time, we'll have a final uh, 2020 open space and rec plan that we can start implementing. So that's what I have. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> Here is the link that you can use to access everything I've talked about and you can learn more and you can get our contact information. Um, that's where you can find out where the survey links are and you can download this presentation and whatnot. So thank you for listening. It was really interesting to learn all about Natick's uh, open space resources and where they're, they are and how they're distributed by ownership. Um, it made me think of a lot of uh, the great experiences I've had on our trails and enjoying our open space and um, what a valuable resource it's been during these times when you can't go to the mall or to like the movies or things like that. You're really yeah. uh, left to enjoy uh, nature <laughs> and it's been really nice to walk around with my girls and my family. Um, so thanks for everything that conservation and open space has done to make these spaces available to us. Um, I had a couple questions for you. Um, I was wondering, it sounds like you've already done some thinking around priorities for open space. So, and I know you didn't get to share with us the details of the action plan as it stands now, um, but what are some of the most important things that you, important needs that you think we have for open space in Natick moving forward? Um, I think, so every community is different and some communities, especially when the economy was doing so well, I'm not sure about the economy now, but you know, as of three months ago when the economy was doing great and there's been high rates of development, um, economic development with commercial and residential, some communities have a really strong need for protecting open space um, and striking this balance between development of land and protecting our natural resources. And that's something that I have always come across in my career. But in Natick, there are opportunities to do that, but it seems like there's a stronger need here to connect the existing resources that we have to each other and to be better stewards for those, for those resources. Um, you know, I did like a quick desktop analysis when I first joined the town to see what properties were over a certain size. I can't remember if I did five or 10 acres, but just to see what was in Natick that was over five or 10 acres and that was privately owned because those are, those are properties that are at risk for development. They're ones that are at risk for subdivision development if they're residentially zoned and if they're commercially zoned, then they're obviously at risk for commercial development. And with the rates of development just really skyrocketed recent, in recent years, um, that's just something that's always on my radar. The analysis that I did though didn't come up with too many properties. There were some, but there wasn't many. So I don't think that means that we shouldn't be protecting new land in Natick. I just think it's um, not as strong of a need as in other communities that may have really large tracts of lands that are privately owned. So I think in Natick, what we need to do is we need to focus on that, but more so focus on the existing assets we have, improving those, 
and making sure that they're connected to each other and that they're connected to the neighborhood so that people can use them and really have this sense of respect for them. And how right now are you um, managing these spaces or how is the town managing them? Different, there's different ways. So specifically for Conservation Commission, we don't have a stewardship or management person. Like I'm, I'm essentially the staff person that works with the Conservation Commission. What we do have though in Natick is a ton of volunteers. I've never seen so many volunteers um, and so many supporters for this, for this work, which is just incredible. But we have various nonprofit groups and we have various town committees that are made up of volunteers who don't get paid to do this work that are out there and they're clearing trails and they're, they're putting out trash cans and they're emptying trash cans. If they didn't exist, then it would, the situation would be a lot worse. So if you know these volunteers, please give them an extra thankful hug when the coronavirus is over. <laughs> or send them an email or a text, check in on them. But like, I just, I, it blows my mind still. Like I've been working with the town since August and I'm just still blown away by the amount of support and the group of volunteers that the, the town of Natick has. Um, we're hoping that we can have a more formal process or um, group for stewardship and management, specifically for ConCom lands. Um, we did create a new trails and forest stewardship committee. That's, you know, this month, the Conservation Commission voted to form this committee. We haven't um, solicited membership yet, but we will be doing that. So if you're watching this and you're interested in joining, reach out to me or keep an eye out for the position posting or the membership posting, because we will be looking for nine members to join that committee. And that's a stewardship committee. So they'll be considering how to be better stewards of the land. And they'll be working with myself and the Open Space Advisory Committee and other groups in town. A couple other questions for you. I was wondering, I was looking at the map that you shared of the distribution of our open space resources and recreational resources. And I noticed that we don't really have a lot in West Natick, um, which we've talked about before. We know there's an environmental justice community. What are things that we could do to try to increase the amount of open space and recreational uses that are available in that section of town? That's a great question because as a planner with a planning background, I'm very hyper-focused sometimes on their environmental justice communities. And Natick is actually one of the um, communities I've worked in with the least environmental justice community because um, I've worked in the cities of Holyoke and Framingham, which have huge environmental justice neighborhoods. So Natick is interesting because there's not really a lot of um, environmental justice groups. And for folks who are watching who don't know what environmental justice is, these are residents who have um, disadvantaged resources available to them due to the fact that they may be low income or English is not their primary language or their mind, they come from a minority background. So we call these people environmental justice neighborhoods where they live in because ten, they tend to live near industrial areas or areas that are lacking in open space resources. That's historically what's happened with the demographic, unfortunately. So in today's day and age, we're trying to change that. So the area that Jillian was referring to is roughly here. You can see my mouse, right? Yep. So this is um, essentially where the environmental justice neighborhood is. And there isn't too many re open space resources over there. There is Arthur Morency Woods, just north of 135. But again, this problem is that there's not easy access to here. I think if you live south of 135, you have to walk on 135 and cut through some of these side streets in order to access Arthur Morency Woods. So I think we can look at a way to make a more direct connection across 135 to get into that area. Um, I also, I don't have, these are numbered actually in our open space and rec plan. These tiny numbers refer to that, um, the inventory. 
in chapter five. So there is these smatterings of smaller open space or rec resources. I'm just not entirely sure right now what they are. But again, I think it all comes down to connections. We have to make better connections. We can increase open space and rec probably in this neighborhood, but there might not be that many opportunities. So that it's more so how do we connect people to these resources better and more safely? Makes a lot of sense. Um, my last question for you, um, so I have a lot more, but we're limited in our time. Um, I'm wondering, uh, you mentioned um, the COVID-19 emergency situation that we're in right now, and I know that's affecting your planning efforts, obviously, where you're doing some stuff virtually now. Um, has the crisis changed your thoughts about the uses of open space or what um, might go into your action plan at all? I don't think we need to change or add anything additional to the action plan, but it is making us think differently about the usage of our open spaces. It's, it's great in a way. Um, we're trying to keep the open spaces open as much as possible because of the fact that you can't go anywhere right now. You have to stay in your house or you can go outside into nature. You can't go to the store. And if you do go to the store, you should be going in and you should be leaving. Um, so we are finding huge, huge volumes of people accessing these areas that we aren't used to and we haven't seen before. And this is across the board. This isn't in Natick. This is everywhere. This is in Massachusetts. This is in the US. This is in the globe, all across the globe. Um, so it is making us think a little bit about should we be increasing parking at some of these areas because they're being overused right now. Um, and I don't know if that's temporary or not. So we're gonna have to monitor that. Um, we're hoping that there will be more support and appreciation for these resources moving forward because of this. There's more people that are going outside that might not normally do so, um, which will be great. But at the same time if that happens, we might have to consider increasing capacity in like the parking areas. Um, we are asking people, we have a list of social distancing um, type of guidelines on the ComCom's website. I, I'm not sure if Reckon Parks has something, but I'm, I'm just familiar with ComCom. So we do have something on our website that outlines some best practices to follow if you are visiting some of our spaces. Because again, we want to continue to keep them open. Um, the playgrounds, basketball courts, and the dog park are not open because of the fact that people were using them and they weren't following social distancing guidelines. But everything else seems to remain open and we're hoping that can continue to do so. But in order to do that, we're asking everyone to please follow the rules, which is, you know, abiding by the social distancing guidelines, making sure your dogs are on leash. Um, and if you are accessing one of the sites and you wanna do some good, why don't you bring, bring a trash bag and pick up some trash, bring, bring some gloves and pick up some trash along the way. Um, I mean, we are airing this on Earth Day, so maybe when you watch this, you can go out during Earth Week and play your part and pick up a little bit because as I said, it's hard sometimes to have the town's resources doing this. And we also had to cancel Natick Trail Days. So twice a year we have Natick Trail Days and it was supposed to be May 2nd, the first Saturday in May. And we're canceling that because of COVID-19. So that's not happening, but if folks can go out and just play, play a role and help clean up some of these areas, that would be appreciative, but make sure you're following social distancing guidelines. <laughs> All right, well, awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us? I don't think so. Um, if folks have questions, they can find my information online. We also have a generic open space at nadicma.org that you can email. Um, again, we're looking for feedback on this process, even though we can't have a normal public process. So if you have any questions or feedback or anything, just shoot us an email or participate in the survey and we'll see what we can do over the next six weeks. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Marianne. We really appreciate it. Stay safe and thank you for your time.